This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp and HelloFresh. Killua Zoldek, Hunter Hunter's prodigious lightning assassin. Mizuka Makoto, Academy City's Ace Electric Princess. Question, what is more terrifying than the all-powerful crackling might of lightning? Lightning in the hands of cocky, hyper-talented teenagers. Oh, the worst combination. He's Wiz and I'm Boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. The Zoldicks, a vicious family of assassins known the world over. So infamous for their killing techniques, a single photo of any member sells for millions. You don't want to be the target of their next family outing. But like all families, there's bound to be a rebel. As was the case with the middle child, Killua. They seriously named him Kill? Hardcore. Well, it might be a pun on the term kilowatt, but Kill is app, given he's been trained in past tensing people since he was three. I'll say, at age 14, he was strong enough to open a 64-ton door. Jeez, what kind of workout did his family put him through? Somehow, it gave him six skater skills, extendable claws, and rhythm echo, a technique that lets him fool people's senses with just his feet. More accurately, by manipulating the cadence of his footsteps, Killua can create an auditory illusion, capable of tricking even extrasensory abilities. Killua was a heck of a prodigy, but despite being able to effortlessly rip out hearts, his family still thought he wasn't cold-blooded enough. Fed up? He ran away, not to the circus, but to the Hunter Association, an association of people who hunt stuff. There he tested himself in the Hunter's exam and inevitably had gone head over heels for his new friend, Gone. Get it? Oh God, Wiz, are you still taking those waste of time improv classes? Yes, and I think it's going pretty well. Mm-hmm. Killua's family didn't like him uh, making friends, so they sat him down and then calmly and politely tortured him mercilessly as punishment. It was only thanks to Gone that Killua finally convinced his old man to let him go out on adventures with his buddies. But this change of heart was no act of compassion. Killua's father saw his freedom as just another step in molding him into a better killer. And in some ways, he was right. Through his adventures, Killua learned Nen, an invisible life force that- Yeah, yeah, it's key. It's always key. Actually, this one's a bit more complicated. You see, Nen is utilized through four main principles. Ten for containing your aura while defending from physical and mental attacks. Zetsu for relieving fatigue and masking your presence. Ren for bolstering strength and influencing emotions. Yeah, it's pretty standard so far. And Hatsu, the unique way in which one's Nen is expressed. This comes in many forms, but all fall into one of six types, which represent how proficient a Nen user is at certain techniques. So it's an RPG class system? More like a hybrid class system, because most users actually fall somewhere between two categories, giving them differing degrees of proficiency. Techniques from these Nen categories can even be further enhanced by adding rules to their use. Oh, then there are the advanced principles, which... Oh god, okay, I get it. But we haven't even talked about Killua's Hatsu yet. Killua is a transmuter enhancer, i.e. he specializes in transmuting his aura into different forms and enhancing the power of himself and others. He uses his aura to... He makes lightning! Uh, yes, in Killua's hand, lightning becomes a deadly weapon that he can fire down as a bolt, channel through his arms, or send through metal objects. Like his super alloy yo-yos, these bad boys weigh up to 50 kilograms. See, that's how you make a pun, Wiz. Packing enough force to shatter trees like I just shattered Wiz's confidence. Add in Killua's lightning and he can electrify anyone who touches them. And this isn't some magic-y smagic -y lightning. His bolts have been identified as the real deal more than once. Meaning Killua is certainly as fast as actual lightning, especially when he uses it on himself to bust out God speed a form that greatly amplifies his agility and power, letting him bypass his synapses to reflexively react to threats. For regular folk, that much voltage would be too much. But thanks to Killua's training, he can shrug off over a million volts of electricity. He's also exceptionally crafty. In a Nen fight, every move matters, and strategy almost always triumphs, even against greater strength. Killua used these powers to battle world-renowned thieves, bomber mercenaries, and ants. That may not sound like much, but these chimera ants were brutal, murdering and eating people by the hundreds of thousands, then threatening billions. 
That reminds me of an old experiment. Gone horribly wrong. Killua understandably wanted to bail, but Gon pulled him back in, much to his frustration. Killua wanted to be there for Gon emotionally, but could not comprehend why he was risking so much against the Chimera Ants, going as far as becoming a monster. In other words, Killua was crushing really hard, but didn't know what to do about Gon's simple-minded impulsiveness. It didn't end well for anyone. It wasn't all doom and gloom, though. Killua held his own against some of the Chimera Ants best, surviving this forest-consuming blast from one of their captains. Which, judging by its size, was worth several Killua tons! And he later injured a top-ranking royal guard, Yupi. Sure, he ran for the hills the moment Godspeed wore off, and isn't as strong as the weird horse man, but even just damaging someone who can make a crater like this is nothing to sniff at. But amidst all the fighting, Killua still could not get his family out of his mind. Literally. As in, his brother, Ilumi, put a needle in his head, forcing him to be controlled by self-preservation, ensuring he'd always run when victory isn't guaranteed. Wiz, you think you can call CBS for that? Thankfully, after some much-needed self-surgery and self-reflection, Killua removed it, overcoming his mental barrier and ready to risk his life for those he cherishes. Which he did when he finally got himself and his dear sister Aluka away from their demented family. He even brought Gon back from the brink of his creepy Nen coma. But despite how valuable Gon was as a friend, Killua realized his unhealthy dependence on him. So he decided to travel with and protect Aluka, finally realizing what he wants to do for the rest of his life. Oh god, the tearful romantic party! Still, if Gon or Aluka ever need help, Killua is sure to come running. Ready to Killua anyone dumb enough to mess with him or those he cares about. This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. It can be easy to spend all your time on your work, your friends, your family, but how much time do you actually spend on yourself? Therapy can be an incredible asset to your mental health, even if you don't think you need it right at this moment. A lot of these problems can be hard to spot without self-reflection and an outside perspective. It's easy to accept things the way they are without realizing that maybe they could be better. Everyone can benefit from becoming the best version of themselves. Positive coping skills, setting boundaries, supporting others without leaving yourself behind, all incredibly important to practice in your journey for self-fulfillment. And in this super busy world, BetterHelp is entirely online and designed to be flexible to your schedule. All you have to do to start is fill out a brief questionnaire to be matched with a licensed therapist. And if you'd like to make a change, you can switch therapists at any time at no additional charge. Find more balance with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash DeathBattle today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash DeathBattle. Academy City, a sprawling metropolis filled with schools where espers train to master their supernatural abilities. Most of these youngins dream of rivaling the best espers, but only a few are hardworking and smart enough to do it. Among them being Tokiwadai Middle School's Level 5 Electro Master, Misaka Mikoto. Level 5? So she's a Pokemon, but an anime girl. Each Esper's power and utility is ranked, with level 5 being the highest they can normally achieve. And after working up to that level, Misaka became unstoppable. She can magnetize herself to metal, electrically enhance her physique, sense her surroundings through an electromagnetic radar, and generate billions of volts. In addition, she can make iron sand from disparate particles in the air to form tornadoes, body decoys, or a sword that vibrates at rapid speeds for enhanced cutting power. Just what an anime girl needs a chainsaw man if she gets serious misaka can even make a friggin six million ton kaiju out of it with such tremendous power misaka put an end to many crimes earning fear among criminals admiration among her peers and lots of personal pride in her abilities there was nothing she couldn't overcome Nothing except the bane of all Sundares, a frizzy-haired, dumbass anime protagonist. Enter Kamijo Toma, a level zero nobody who Misaka could not harm, no matter how many times she tried. Oh, I hate you, but I secretly love you, and it'll work out in the end. Shut up! But she'd have more than a dork like Toma to worry about. As amazing as Academy City is, it's more corrupt than New York real estate. Years ago, Misaka gave some shady scientists a sample of her DNA, being promised it'd help cure tons of fatal diseases. Instead, they made tens of thousands of clones of her, sending them all to be slaughtered one by one. 
specifically against another level 5 and A tier edgelord named Accelerator. By farming all these clones, they hoped he would finally get enough EXP to become a mythic level 6. Is that seriously all it takes? How does this Esper stuff work? I'm glad you asked. Espers represent the scientific side of the world, a side I'm oh so familiar with. All espers possess an involuntary movement or aim diffusion field that manifests their power, letting them consciously alter reality. Changing reality with your mind. Isn't that just magic? Au contraire, Boomstick, it's quite scientific. Look at Misika's signature move, the railgun. Many real-life railguns use a set of parallel conductors to generate Lorentz force. By envisioning imaginary rails between herself and her target, Misika can create a similar yet greater effect, accelerating the speed and kinetic force of a projectile, usually a coin, into a concussive bullet. It's beautiful. It's science. How long are you going to be nerding out over this? Come on, this is like my one thing. Uh, where was I? Oh yeah, thousands of dead clones. Traumatized by the endless slaughter, Misika felt enormous guilt. You see it all the time with horrific experiments. Sure, buddy. She worked for days to end the clone project, but concluded it would have to end with her sacrifice. But Toma butted in, giving Misika the support she needed in her darkest hour, while also punching out Albino Magneto with his Esper-proof fist. Misika had shouldered her burden for so long that she forgot how to rely on others. This wake-up call from her newfound crush was exactly what she needed. But even with Accelerator decelerated, Misika kept fighting Academy City's underbelly, all to protect her friends and free her sister clones she befriended. She dealt with a lot of trouble on the way, but had the power to do it. In her battle with a killer cyborg lady, Misika conjured a city-spanning storm, which, by measuring the size of the cloud relative to the city, would require over 58 kilotons of energy to make. Kilotons. She's also fought other level fives, not just Accelerator. She got into a middle school beef with a snobby telepath, fought this explosive weirdo, and dodged particle beams from an unhinged Karen. The electrons of which can accelerate to high relativistic speeds. It's no shock! <laughs> Misika's reactions are that fast, given her lightning has been stated to be light speed on five different occasions. More than just her powers, though, Misika's greatest asset is her intellect. It might not look it, but high-level espers constantly perform tons of nerd math just to make their powers work. And understanding other powers has been just as vital to Misika's survival. Take her bout with the magic Valkyrie, Brunhill. Remember when Wiz said espers were the science side of the world? Well, these weirdos are packing the magic. A single mistake from Misika could have meant death, but she still stalemated Brunhild. Now, Brunhild was still stronger and faster, but it is impressive Misika was able to harm a saint, who are normally only deployed against foes capable of leveling mountains. One such foe, Hell, froze 100 kilometers of ocean. You'd think this means Misika can take on all sorts of magical baddies, but alas, the power creep says otherwise. He's actually serious. When you're dealing with crazy magicians and magic gods, even a level 5 Esper struggles to keep up. Misika valued her abilities so highly that she struggled to maintain her self esteem when they weren't enough. A shame Misika cares so much about getting stronger when Toma appreciates her as a person first and foremost. While certainly a flaw, that ever persistent hard headedness will also keep Misika around, no matter the stakes. So watch out, because this pint-sized 14-year-old is quite literally a walking railgun. This episode is sponsored by HelloFresh. Now me, I love to cook, but every time I have Wiz over for a lovely home-cooked meal, he has... Complaints. I told you I don't care if squirrel con carne is a family tradition. I'm not. That is until I started getting HelloFresh. You're getting farm fresh, pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered straight to your doorstep. Or trailer step in my case. And what a godsend it was! HelloFresh's seasonal ingredients are picked at peak ripeness and travel from the farm to your doorstep in less than seven days for fresh flavor in every bite. From foolproof instructions to high quality proteins and veggies, HelloFresh brings out your inner chef with every tasty, easy to prepare meal. Including fast and fresh options ready in just 15 minutes or less. It's also 25% less expensive than takeout. No matter your lifestyle, you'll always find delicious recipes recipes on the HelloFresh menu. Go to HelloFresh.com slash DeathBattle16 and use code DeathBattle16 for 16 free meals plus free shipping. Alright, the combatants are set and we've run the data through all possibilities. It's time for a Death Battle! Hey, that's mine! 
I've been looking for it all day. Give it here. You want it? <laughs> Come and get it. Coins, huh? I had a butler who used these. Focus. It's a trick of sound, not sight. Gotcha! He's good at hand-to-hand. -hand. Better keep my distance. She has stronger lightning. Gotta get in close. No, no problem. Pro meters. Altitude, 45, 40, now. <laughs> KO! The angle, the electromagnetism, the science, it's, it's... <gasps> All right, take a breather there, champ. Whew. While Killua's assassin training made him a vicious threat, Misaka's abilities and know-how gave her the counter she needed in this mind-numbing battle of wits. Killua could survive Killua ton level blasts, and given some leeway, could scale to Yuppie, whose crater feat was worth 18 megatons of TNT. Impressive, but the storm Misaka created beat anything Killua has done directly. And given similar scaling to Brunhild, who Misaka not only harmed but stalemated, her output could reach hundreds of megatons of TNT. Meaning, no matter which numbers are used, Misaka would always have the advantage in raw electrical power. No surprise there! Killua may have shrugged off a million volts of electricity, but Misaka can dish out and survive billions! Still, both characters have contended with and harmed stronger opponents, and the two power systems they work under have allowed weaker opponents to defeat stronger ones in the past. So, might alone wouldn't net either a win. Plus, Killua was way better at hand-to-hand -hand and physically stronger. Knowing his crafty assassin skills, things could have gone south for Misaka if she wasn't careful. But fortunately for the railgun, she was. Her fight with Brunhild shows she knows how to deal with tough, up-close threats while keeping her distance. And being able to dodge particle beams meant Misako was more than fast enough to react to even Killua's lightning-quick speed. Add to that her bigger pool of powers, and she had plenty of ways to counter Rhythm Echo, since Killua's lightning, or just pin him in place long enough to pull off a railgun finisher. Killua was strong, but he wasn't gonna outmuscle six million tons of iron sand. Killua was a prodigy in all things Nen, Lightning, and killing, but Misika's varied electro powers, quick reflexes, and scientific brilliance let her cash in a win. But hey, at least she let Killua keep the change. She Killawood him! The winner is Misika Mikoto. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned, we have a new death battle releasing every two weeks this year. And click the join button to get new perks and extra content. Planet level members even see death battles before anyone else, so don't miss out.